The dovetail joint has been around since the time of the Egyptians, and it's the most recognized joint in woodworking. It relies on the holding power of an interlocking joint. Now some of the examples of dovetails are what's called a through dovetail, usually used on blanket chests and the like, where you can see the pins and tails on both sides of the work. The second type is what's called a half blind, usually used on drawers where you can't see the joint from the face, it allows a nicer look, but the true joinery work is visible from the sides. Now if the thought of making a dovetail joint with a mallet and a chisel and a marking aid seems a little bit daunting, there is hope, and it's called a dovetail jig. And though they've evolved over time, dovetail jigs still rely on a template that guides a router and a set of bits across your work surface. Now we're going to show you how to lay out a, a drawer, show you how to do the setup on them, and let's cut some of those joints. Okay, let's start with a piece of three quarter inch walnut. We're going to use that for the front. And then I've got half inch pieces of poplar we're going to use for the sides. Now on your standard drawer, it's the front and where all the stress is placed on a drawer where the dovetails go. On the back, we're just going to have a standard rabbited joint. So on the back side, you really won't see much of that, but you will see the full sides. So to mark these, I'm just going to lay the pieces down just as you see them. And now I'm going to mark them. For the walnut, the wood's a little bit dark, so I'm just going to use a piece of chalk. This is the inside edge. And this is also what's called a pin board. The sides, I'm going to mark the inside edges. And these are the tail boards. So we'll do one on one side. We'll do one on the other. And the last one, of course, would be the inside edge here. Now secondarily, to make sure that I've kind of covered all of my, my potential issues, I want to mark each one of these corner in successive orders so that I know when I go to lay this out, I can make sure that I have that same layout. So here's side one, here's one, here's two, and finally four. Now I know that I've got everything marked the way I want to see it, and just in case you want to kind of reinforce what you've got, if you turn these over and just mark an O for outside. Now when we talk about cutting the front and the sides to length, the length of the front of this drawer should match the length of the drawer box opening. When we talk about the sides, the length of this size should mark the depth of that drawer box opening minus the offset. So if the drawer box opening is 20 inches deep, we want our drawer side to be 19 and 5 eighths plus the 3 eighths offset so that the total length here is 20 inches matching the inside of that drawer box. Now when doing through dovetails, we still want the length of this drawer front to equal the width of that drawer opening. But the length of the side, since there is no offset, can equal the depth of that drawer opening. So in our previous example of 20 inches, this board's cut to 20. And one last little tip. As long as we've got the boards laid out for our sides and front, I think it's always a good idea to mark where the rabbits are going to go for that drawer box base. So we're just going to mark each one of these and it kind of makes it a little bit easier for layout when the time comes. First joint we're going to do is the dovetail joint where you can see the joinery from both the front and the side. When we take these apart you'll notice that the tail board has the little tails on there that look like a dove's tail hence the name and this is a pin board or the drawer front. To do this particular joint we're going to do the tail board first and we're going to put the outside edge in towards the jig. Alright, if I take this tail board, remember here's our mark for the outside, and I turn it to face the jig, I want to slide it up until it almost touches the fingers, but I don't want them up there all the way yet, because I don't know exactly how deep I want to make that cut. The easiest way to do that is to take your pin board and use that as a spacer. And you'll see that the depth of these tails is determined by how thick this board is. So I'll take a scrap of this pin board, slide that up into the jig at the top using that as my spacer. Also want to make sure that I slide a secondary board, same thickness on the other side, it kind of helps balance this out a bit. Lock those pieces down. Now we'll drop the template and now I can take my tail board 
slide it up until it matches underneath those fingers and lock it in. We're now set for the depth. Now we're going to make the cut on this tail board using a dovetail bit. You can see it here coming out of the bottom of the router. The length of this bit, I've set it an inch and nine sixteenths. Although a little bit in or out will affect the tightness or looseness of this joint. And your jig and your material will dictate how far that bit comes out. On this particular jig, there's a depth stop built into one side, the height of which is controlled by that pinboard sample we put in on one side. And what I'll do is set the router in that slot and then raise or lower that bit till it hits the stop. Okay, one quick tip before we start. Make sure that whenever you put the router into or take out of the jig, make sure that the bit has stopped running. Otherwise, it'll easily make contact with the sides of the jig. When we start, we're going to push the router bit in on the left side of the first finger, run it around that finger, and pull out on the right. Then move to the second one and do the same thing. All right, you've seen me make the cut on the tailboard. It's now time to turn our attention to the pin board. I'm going to reverse the order of the boards that sit on the jigs, and instead of having a sample of the pin board sit on top, I'm going to have the tailboard. And the reason I'm doing it is because the tailboard's thickness determines how deep this cut is going to be made on the pin board. And one last thing we have to do to the jig is flip this template over, like so. This now sets up the fingers, so we're ready to do the pin board. Now to cut the pin board, we're going to change router bits to a straight bit, as you see here. And the distance this time from the base to the edge of the bit is an inch and a quarter. And again, your jig and your stock may cause a little bit of variance, and you'll want to check that with your manual and check it by a couple of tests. But that's what we've set up for ours. I'm going to set the router in place, and again, want to make sure that the motor is off when we do it. A couple of tips here. When we start the plunge, I want to plunge in on the left-hand side of that pin, move slowly to the right, and then work my way back and forth as I eat away that material. All right, now let's see how well we did. Take our pin board out. Find the tail board here. Put that joint together and that's not bad. Nice looking joint. Now, had this joint been very tight, very hard to put together or extremely loose, it means that we'll do is we'll take this template and move it forward or backwards. If we find that the pins or tails are proud or recessed, on either surface, it means lengthening or shortening the router bit. Check your owner's manual to see what to do in those instances, but you should find a pretty nice joint when you're done. The next joint we're going to do is called a half-blind dovetail joint. It's a type used in drawer construction. You can see the joinery on the sides, but you don't see it on the front, hence the name half-blind. And we're going to use the same jig as we used when we did the through dovetails. We're going to change the configuration of the fingers. Now one of the differences in doing a joint like this is that both of these joints are cut at the same time using only one bit, the dovetail bit, and not two separate bits. And they go on the jig with the outside face facing down, laid against the top of the jig, and the outside face facing in on this side. You, you notice here where the drawer front meets the drawer side. That's the correct layout. You'll also notice that the drawer side is evenly spaced between the outside pins on either end. This gives the nicest look. And to provide an even more perfect configuration, make sure that the width of this drawer is always on the inch plus a quarter. So four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter and the like, that will give the nicest layout for the side of this drawer. Now the next thing we'll do is set the router bit depth. I've set this one for an inch and three sixteenths from the edge of this router bit back to the router base. For my configuration and setup, that seems to work about the best. Yours may change a little bit. Consult your owner's manual to see. Okay, now let's cut this joint. 
And remember again, set the router on the jig. Do not start it until it's on the jig. And when you turn it off, make sure that the blade is stopped before you remove the router. And one other thing, when cutting this joint, I want to cut what's called a climb cut. I want to start on the right side and in effect cut in reverse to lightly score the material, then actually make each one of these passes in the left side and out the right side back and forth around these tips. So here we go. You'll notice how the router bit cut not only the pins, but the tails at the same time. Actually went inside and out here. And you'll also notice on this edge, the offset. Here is our drawer front. It's offset from the side, and that allows this joint to line up when it's been reversed and put together. Now let's take a look. Here's our drawer side. Here's our drawer front. Now there is a nice joint. Now if you've got an adjustable jig, like this one, it will allow you to do what's called a variable spaced half blind dovetail. Very, very nice look on the side. Now the dovetail joint is something you should definitely add to your woodworking arsenal. There's just something about it that says quality. Now get out to your workshop, rev up that router and make some sawdust.